in case anybody can't tell, it is fly season here in in the north of Bali. Um, so I have the delightful addition of about half a million flies <laughs> to today's video. Oh well. Hmm. Ah, coffee. It's about 7am in the morning. I've been up for about an hour, so let's do this. Let's rock and roll. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Charlotte, and today I'm going to tell you about the six books that I'm prioritising reading in 2024. Now, these titles are all backlist. None of them are new release. And I've chosen these titles specifically because they have lingered potentially the longest on my TBR. So these, I would say, are my six reading priorities for 2024. But if you have read them, please do let me know your opinion on them down in the comments below. And also in a week's time, I shall post a video on 10 new anticipated releases for the first quarter uh, of 2024. So if you're interested more in new releases, there is a video coming on that very, very shortly. And without further ado, I'm going to start with The King of Rabbits. This is a debut novel set on a council estate in Somerset. This has come highly recommended by Mercy's Bookish Musings and is the sole reason that it is on my TBR. But this is reminding me so much of Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez, I believe, that I read as part of the Canada Reads Prize, I think in 2022. Um, and I absolutely thought Scarborough was amazing. Um, and if King of Rabbits can be as great as Scarborough was, or potentially even better, then this will be a real treat for me to read. Um, Scarborough also set on a, on a uh, council estate in Canada and follows multiple perspectives. Whereas I think King of Rabbits, we only follow this young boy as he comes of age. Whilst it's set in a council estate, so you would think, okay, this is going to be urban. Actually, I think a lot of this uh, novel dominates in the in the kind of rural landscape arena as nature sort of acts as a refuge uh, to this young boy during the troubling times of his his childhood and teenage years. The language is said to be vivid, so I'm not sure what that means, but the fact that the language has been referenced and praised in itself is a good sign that the writing is of a quality that I will enjoy. But I think thematically this will be what's most interesting to me as this is telling the story of how uh, working class men are often failed by society, which is a, a topic certainly in England, where I'm from, I don't know about the rest of the world, uh, where it's a topic that is becoming more and more necessary to talk about and understand and create better opportunities and better education and, and you know, if, if there's going to be any sort of meaningful level of change there. So moving on to book number two, this is my very first Zadie Smith novel. I'm not sure if that's a big surprise to any of you. I mean, Zadie Smith is a literary giant and I claim to be a literary fiction fan. So the fact that I have not yet read Zadie Smith, I, I don't know if I was a viewer, maybe I'd find that surprising. <laughs> but this is on beauty and I think this one appeals to me most um, in its blurb out of all of her work. I'm not massively drawn to her her titles. I think that's why I have not yet got to them. They haven't quite been compelling enough for me to, to read, but certainly On Beauty is one that I hear time and time again from some of my favourite booktubers being mentioned as a five-star read. And so On Beauty really has piqued my curiosity, along with a blurb that I find particularly enticing, especially right now. It feels the academia scholarly vibes of this feel um, almost very cosy. So this is about a Rembrandt scholar called Howard who's working at a liberal arts college in New England. He's been married for 30 years and his his wife no longer resembles that young fine sexy figure that she once was and that he is uh, he's a little dismayed by that uh, which is funny to me <laughs> because I'm also sure he's not the same uh, striking fine cut young man that he used to be either. So <laughs> But essentially this seems to be about a, uh, a man reaching some sort of midlife crisis, not really knowing his purpose anymore. His children are, are young adults and he's kind of, I guess, disillusioned by his job and the education system and, and clearly isn't that keen on his wife anymore. <laughs> this is also meant to be funny and as it's already causing me to laugh just in a video about it, then yeah, I think it may be slightly funny. Um, this is probably the biggest step outside my wheelhouse of books on this list, so fingers crossed for this one. It also is slightly concerning 
that this has a 3.78 uh, average star rating on Goodreads. That is well below uh, the four star that I know some of my viewers um, never read below on, on Goodreads and I think that's, that's definitely a worthy way of choosing your books for sure. But that sort of fairly low average rating does make me question if it's maybe a hard book to get into or a particularly dislikable protagonist maybe. Um, so we shall see. It'll be, it'll be uh, It'll be fun to check it out either way. Next up we have Truman Capote's In Cold Blood. I feel like everybody has read this um, and I'm really excited to get to it because I do love a thriller and this one feels like the ultimate true crime cold-blooded thriller. We're in a small town in Kansas in 1959 as four members of the same family are brutally murdered one night. But there is no apparent motive for the crime and also no clues for the investigation to follow. So here Truman Capote is reconstructing not only the murder but also the trial and the execution of the, the people who were accused and committed of this murder. Along the way giving poignant insights into the nature of American violence which sounds um, an especially interesting part of this novel because I feel like American violence is is quite different to certainly the violence that was shown um, to me as a as a kid on the news and as an adult on the news in England we don't really have gun violence because guns aren't allowed yes yeah, it's, it's a totally different realm of of violence and brutality that is just not part of my culture and never has been and hopefully never will be so um yeah I feel like uh it's kind of peeking behind the curtain there I guess onto American crime so we are halfway through this list the fourth book on this list is Margaret Atwood's Alias Grace <laughs> I always say that wrong Alias Grace <laughs> Everyone knows, I think, at this point that I'm a massive Margaret Atwood fan. Uh, it is my intention to read three more novels by her this year, one of which is um, Alias Grace, and that is probably the one that's been on my TBR the longest, so I really want to prioritise it this year. Um, there is also the Netflix TV show around it, which I think I may watch after as well, just because... I've heard good things about that as well but um if you're a margaret atwood fan do let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite of her because i always love to hear uh how it how it differs uh, for everybody and it's mine i would say is the blind assassin but who knows maybe alias grace will will pivot to the post and will become my new favorite then i also want to read hernan diaz's trust this was really popular several years ago when it was nominated for the Booker. I didn't read it at that time. Um, I, I'm not quite sure why, but I didn't read it, so it's on my list to read this year. This is about a hyper-rich aristocratic couple living in 1920s New York. During the end of the Golden Age, sitting on top of a seemingly endless pile of cash, it seems, and wealth. But as it is the end of the 1920s, Depression era is right around the corner, and we follow these characters across the next century where presumably they suffer a massive fall from grace, just knowing the history. Um, but who knows, maybe maybe they'll have a triumphant return as well. I do like um, longer novels that centre around uh, one family over the course of a century. I typically get on well with that sort of um, pattern and, and theme. So I think that this will probably hinge on the writing. I've never read um, a Hernan Diaz book before, but I think my enjoyment of this novel will hinge on whether I enjoy the writing or not, but it is Booker nominated, so that would suggest that the writing is of good quality. It's setting itself up for me to enjoy it. What's confusing me though is that this is genred as a mystery novel, so presumably there is a strong mystery element that I'm as yet unaware of throughout this novel, but that, that still goes in its favour because I do love a good mystery as well, so I mean this should be a really really brilliant read for me. And finally we have William Golding. I have not read a William Golding novel since I was 14 reading The Lord of the Flies at school but Rites of Passage sounds really great. It sounds like it's right up my street because it's set at sea and is actually the first in Golding's uh, Sea Trilogy. So here we're following a young man as he travels from England to Australia in the 1800s. Apparently he is keeping a journal during this time so potentially he is writing to us the reader purely in journal entries and he is writing amongst the growing tensions on board the ship where shame is a deadlier force than the sea which sounds very good uh, that's a theme that came up in lord of the flies uh, i feel william golding is going to be a super strong author 
thematically just because of my study of his text previously. Uh, he really goes deep into the world of theming and imagery and symbolism so I'm really looking forward to that. This is also going to be full of wit. I think our protagonist is full of personality and uh, that comes across strongly. So I really am so looking forward to this novel, especially on the list. Now that I have recounted all of these to you and kind of why I'm interested in reading them, I'm even more inspired and enthusiastic to read them all. And uh, yeah, these six sound really, really great. But if you have read them, do leave me your opinion on them down in the comments below. No spoilers, but certainly tell me how you found it and um, your overall reading experience, whether they were memorable reads for you. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Please make sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And I shall see you very soon in my next video, guys. Bye.